serious ex-prisoners of Reddit, who was the most evil person there, and what did they do that was so bad? Not in prison, but I was an intern in a public defender's office over 10 years ago, and the one that stands out was a juvenile locked up for the third time for aping kids aged 2 to 4. Kid was obese and clearly very damaged. This was a juvenile detention center that was often used as a babysitter by crackhead moms, accuse the kid of a crime, and get them locked up for the weekend so they could go on a bender. He was serving a sentence. I was warned going in there that he could turn violent at the drop of a hat and the attorney was nervous about bringing a young female in but I insisted. Kid looks me straight in the eye and says don't let me out, I will do it again. I can't stop. He was hunched over, dead eyes and completely serious. Not sure about most evil but interesting story. When I did time I was bunked up with a guy who had stabbed his uncle to death molested him. Guy was insanely mean, but when lockup came, he was super nice to me. He was 23, but cold and read, alright so we would dictate letters to his girlfriend and I would write them for him. I did 5 years in Lee Seaster and Featherston Priscilla Ennis in the early 80s. One guy in Featherston was a lifer and had done 30 plus years. Apparently he used to fuck young boys and cut their cocks off. When he was arrested he had a fresh vodka in his pocket. English guy here. I spent four and a half months in prison in 2018. There was a guy who was really nice. Seemed like a genuine guy. That was until I found out her strangled his drunk wife to death and left her there whilst he went to work the next morning. I was in a women's prison, new inmate told everyone she was in for tax fraud. Couple of days later, she gets the crap beaten out of her and doesn't leave her cell again. Food gets taken in by screws and eventually she gets ghosted out. Turns out she was in our side and both her husband and son were in the male side for running a child porn ring. Those guys had been put straight in the VP wing, but most female prisons don't have enough sex offenders to have one. It was one of the screws who told some of the inmates why she was in, they wanted her to be taught a lesson. The offenses were awful, she was fully part of it, and was responsible for acquiring a lot of the victims as she was trusted by people. Youngest victim was her niece's 3 month old who had to be hospitalized due to trauma. I'm 20 was in and out juvie from 15 to 18 till I went to county jail. The worst people I came into contact was a boy 15 who shot his stepmother, slit her throat, beat her head in with a blunt object, wrapped her in sheets for the father's room at to find her then he shot him. Happened in McMinnville, Oregon. Other than that a lot of people raping siblings and making threats to shoot up the high schools in the area. That's Yamhill County for you. I was in JDC not doc, but most of the people in JDC were locked up for the same reason as some people would be in document. I remember talking to this kid, and he was kind of stupid in the head. I asked him what he did, and he raped his 10 year old sister, while she was asleep. Most of them were in there for murder, but he stood out, since he was a sex offender. I was incarcerated with over 280 people doing life without parole. There were all kinds stabbed the neighbor lady 150 plus times, shot a bully in the head in the school parking lot, beat a dude with a hammer, etc. There were two that stuck with me though one where he looked me right in the eye and told me about shooting a guy with a shotgun to the chest, creeped me the f out, weirdo that kidnapped and killed some girl in his basement was another. One of the women on my wing cut up her lover and put his body parts in her empty TV box, then put the TV box on his mother's doorstep. My dad went to prison for 6 months, and there's this one story that striked me the most. A guy was convicted for raping someone, when he was asked who did he rape he said it was just some prostitute. Later that day, when it was time for visiting his wife went ballistic on him screaming at him at the top of her lungs. Turns out he raped his 11 year old stepdaughter. After the inmates and policemen found that out they took turns in beating the shit out of him. 
Hands down the creepiest. This lady was married, and the husband cheated. Had a full blown affair, ended up with a love child. Somewhere along the line the wife is babysitting the husband's illegitimate child. He comes home from work, sitting down to eat dinner, and asks her how is the baby? She says I don't know, you tell me. This bitch ended up killing the baby, cooking it, putting it in the food, and fed it to him. She's doing two life sentences. This is in Arizona by the way. Side note, she looks like the devil. Her eyes are literally black, and she looks like she has no soul. It takes a lot to creep me out, but this lady's vibe is definition one of the darkest things have ever felt in my entire life. I worked in corrections and had an inmate beg for chemical castration because he was a pedo and didn't want to hurt anyone ever again. The state refused his request, so he cut his balls off and flushed them. He never regretted doing it either. I was a juror, never been in jail slash prison, on a high profile murder case a couple years ago. The man was charged with conspiracy to commit murder. We found him not guilty, long story, as it was his girlfriend that actually committed the crime. This wasn't just any typical murder though. This guy's girlfriend faked a pregnancy, and when it was time to deliver, she lured a pregnant neighbor girl over to her apartment, killed her, and cut the baby out, intending to raise it as their own. I was never in prison, but I worked in a jail. The most notable inmate there was Jonathan Lawrence. Him and his best friend Jeremiah Rogers lured a girl into the woods and killed her in cold blood. When police were searching his home, they found her calf in his freezer that he was saving to eat. He was sentenced to death. A woman I was acquainted with in the facility I was in allegedly microwaved her child. Another woman killed her parents. A good friend of mine was forced by her husband to dispose of her sister's body after her husband had raped and murdered her. Never a prisoner, but a social worker for CPS. I had a mom who was a prostitute and this guy that she was meeting up with liked kids too. Mom brought her four year old daughter to a motel in her bathing suit and basically told the man here ya go. They were both arrested obviously. The most disturbing part was that she didn't see what the big deal was her daughter would have to learn the way of the world somehow, that one stuck with me. I worked at a state women's prison as a guard. Most women there were there for drug related charges so nothing crazy. But the women there for the worst crime was a deaf woman who decided to chop up her wife with a chainsaw while she was sleeping. The most fucked up thing about it is, since she was deaf she didn't even hear the screams or pain she was causing. I slept next to a dude that brutally murdered a 3 years old boy. Beat the child to death. Matthew Moat was the boy's name. Don't google it if you want to sleep tonight. I was taught to play cards by a man that killed two women in a robbery with his wife as the co-defendant. His name was Martin Woolley. I was a correctional officer at a prison, 2,000 inmates that housed a school shooter and a serial killer who had slain 25 women. My vote for most evil is a rapist, currently housed in the honor dorm. He wasn't creepy. He gave them me the aura of a super nice guy. He would super glue the eyes of his victims shut. He reminds me of the lyrics in Leonard Cohen's song, Never mind, I live among you. Well disguised. Well, I'm not an ex-prisoner, but I used to work in prison and worst one I remember is a guy in his 20s had raped, murdered, and violated the body slash grave. Not sure about this, in Finland, the term is quite open, but ranges from doing something awful to unburied body to violating the grave. Didn't wanna know what he had done. Worst part is, he was one of those guys who seemed quite innocent and normal guy, which made me realize that any random person I see, regardless of what he slash she slash it looks like, because that kind of stuff really doesn't matter. I got busted for my last DUI a few years ago. 
Sober from alcohol now thanks to therapy and medical marijuana, no thanks to the four months I spent in a Connecticut prison. One day I had a court trip. You get woken up at 3 in the morning, sit around for hours, get on a bus or van, go to other prisons to pick up other inmates, then court. All day affair. This day we were brought from our medium security prison to a maximum. In the prison bus there's two or four plastic boxes for high level inmates. That day I got to ride about 15 feet from Stephen Hayes. Hayes and his partner Joshua Komisarjevsky beat a man nearly to death, then raped and murdered a woman and their two daughters. Google Cheshire Connecticut Petted Murders. I was in jail for one week violating probation, failed a drug test, weed, and I was in the same pod as Zachary Adams while he was awaiting trial. He kidnapped, raped, and murdered Holly Bobbo and bragged about it. I was in there for smoking, weed and put in the same pod as a murderer. The justice system is fucked. I was in county jail a year and a half awaiting trial, and there was this guy in Adseg that was accused of sneaking into the homes of elder women at night and raping them after they fell asleep. He was convicted of the crime and sent to prison where he was mysteriously poisoned though the official cause of death is unknown. I've never been to prison, but I've met a lot of people who have been cause I worked at some shitty casino. The worst one was this guy in his 40s, I think, who was so sweet and funny every time he came in. He would leave huge tips for us, buy us snacks from our own bar, just sit and talk with us, because night shifts were quiet and boring. We had a thing with our colleagues, where we would sometimes google their names because, well, night shifts were really boring. Turns out that sweet and generous man had raped and murdered a 5 year old boy. It's terrifying to think what kind of people you really get in contact with without even knowing who they are.